How many times have you thought about dinner today? Or wondered what to eat next? Maybe we can help you out. Hello everyone, my name is Charlotte van Hoge. And my name is Nona van der Molen. Welcome to A Taste of Northern Arizona. Northern Arizona is home to the famous Route 66, haunted hotels and beautiful scenery. But today we are going to focus on something else Northern Arizona has to offer, food. Locally produced food is becoming more and more popular here. Many restaurants here fo follow this trend, including Criollo, which mainly uses local ingredients. Our reporter Eve Komen will tell you more. One local entrepreneur is running three different farm-to-table restaurants, all serving various cuisines. And not only that, he's also found a way to provide sustainable food for the community. Let's go take a look inside. Criollo is a Latin fusion restaurant that uses local and sustainable food suppliers. We got a chance to talk to the founder and owner, Paul Moyer. I sort of always knew I was headed in this direction. Uh, we chose Flagstaff as a, as a town that we wanted to live in and start a business in. Over the last few years, Criollo has developed a good relationship with the local community as they give back by providing exactly what the customers expect. We based that concept and that menu on a local food supply. We did that just out of uh, a passion for wanting to help promote the local food economy in Arizona. Criollo uses meat from proper meats, a butcher shop also founded by Paul, where people can directly buy locally sourced meat. We talked to butcher Joe Fianda about the challenges of using local meat. It has been challenging, but more because most of the beef raised in Arizona ends up being sold at auction. So we, we're trying to bring it back and keep what, what animals are being raised here to stay in Arizona. Paul says local suppliers are very important to him and Criollo for several reasons. Uh, a lot of the problems that we talk about today can relate back to our food system from environmental problems and health problems and economic problems. And so this is just our little way of trying to help address some of those issues. The chef at Criollo, Pedro Felix, shares Paul's belief about the importance of sourcing local ingredients. I think it's always better to source out as close as you can to the restaurant. I think it's just better to, to work with a product that hasn't traveled as far, so you definitely get more of a fresh uh, product. To give us a taste of locally sourced food, the Criollo staff prepared a couple of dishes for us. The community has played a huge role in the success of Criollo, and Paul is extremely proud of everything he has accomplished. I think the thing that brings me the most joy is getting that positive response and getting the support from the community. Knowing that we're able to do what we do and be successful at it, is, uh, that's, a, that's a big deal. Now that I know how much effort goes into a farm to table restaurant, I can't wait to eat this delicious food. I'm Ave, and I'm tasting Arizona one bite at a time. Bon appetit! Going out for dinner can be amazing, especially when you get to eat something you don't usually make yourself. But sometimes we prefer to stay at home. But that does not mean you have to compromise on the quality of your food. Often the key is using locally produced ingredients. Now, it might be a challenge to use only local ingredients, but it is possible. Our reporter, Miglena Panayotova, talked to a Flexav local and food lover about some of the insight he's gained over the years. Let's see what tips and tricks he taught her. Hello everyone, today I'm going to challenge myself to prepare something completely on my own. Don't get me wrong, the only thing I can make are brownies and I love desserts, they're my true passion. But today, only because of you, I'm going to try to prepare a real meal. Charlie Hicks shared with me his super secret onion burger receipt, which we're going to try to make today. 
I'm going to use only local res uh, products such as veggies, meat, some cheese, of course, because we are coming from the Netherlands, and a fresh bread. Wish me luck, fingers crossed, I'm going to give it a start and we're going to take it one bite at a time. Now that Miglena is ready for the challenge, there is only one thing missing, the right ingredients. Where can we get high quality, fresh and locally sourced meat? Inga Valuna will tell you more. In a fast-paced world, it's not always easy to know where your food comes from. One local restaurant in northern Arizona wants to make that just a little easier for you. Diablo Burger values ethically sourced food that doesn't compromise taste for its ethical sourcing. Today we're going to take you from table to ranch by tasting one of their famous burgers. Every day, burgers are made, one at a time, by hand, using a petty press. If there's something not right about the beef, we know it immediately. But in the almost 10 years we've been open, we've never had an issue because of the quality control that the ranches do on their product. The locally raised beef served here comes from an organization called the Diablo Trust, which partners with two local ranches. It's a partnership aimed at creating a sustainable and financially successful business while protecting the environment. The effort that we put into building these relationships, serving this food, feeding our community a healthy product, that it's worth it. Let's have a taste of this delicious burger. Now that we've seen and tasted this delicious meat, Let's see where it comes from. Barty Bar is a ranch in Coconino County, and it is part of the Diablo Trust, meaning that that delicious burger originates right here. Let's find out what it takes to run a ranch. Jeremy Crones is director of the Diablo Trust. He says working with local restaurants like Diablo Burger serves an important purpose. It helps connect me and other consumers to their food base. To me, this meat is special because it's local, and to me that is as important as food politics can get. Rancher Judy Prosser says the meat sold to Diablo Burger comes from the mature cows and bulls here at the Barty Bar Ranch. The older the animal, typically the more flavorful the meat. They are also grass-fed, producing a meat that tastes different than the grain-fed beef served in most restaurants. Judy says the philosophy here at the Barty Bar Ranch is to leave the land in better condition than they found it. We rotate our cattle so that the grass has time to recover from the grazing. We improve the land by doing that. It might seem odd for a conservation group like the Diablo Trust to be involved in ranching, which is not always considered environmentally friendly. But Jeremy says the idea is to bring people together with the goal of clear water, open land and healthy wildlife. Diablo Trust is here to make sure that we can reach that end goal with everybody being happy. I've learned a lot about meat and where it comes from. This was Barty Bar Ranch. My name is Inga and I'm exploring northern Arizona one bite at a time. Now that we know where some of the best local meat comes from, let's see what McGlynn is up to. Welcome back. Here I am ready to prepare the first burger ever in my life. And because I want to achieve spectacular results and show Charlie that I can do his recipe better than himself, I got for myself a locally sourced beef from a ranch here in Northern Arizona. You want to put your beef in a large cup so that it could be easier for you to mix it. Here comes the most interesting part, the secret ingredient that Charlie shared only with me. You probably won't believe it, I didn't believe it as well, but what I'm gonna use, it's dry onion soup mix. That's correct, we're gonna mix the meat with the soup mix. And you have to know, the more you add, the more salty your burger will be. So if you're like me and you don't like much salt, I will recommend don't put much. This could be enough. Now you want to start mixing. And you have to know something. You don't want to over mix it. Otherwise, your meat won't stick pretty much together. Mix it and take a quantity 
a little bit larger than the size of your palm. Start mixing, start forming a paddy. You want to roll, smash it with your hands, and now it's ready for the grill. Perfect. The only thing we have to do now is wait until it's ready and we're going to take it one bite at a time. But what about the veggies? As a vegetarian, I sure need my vegetables. Let's join anne Moon from Maastricht on her quest to find some fresh local produce that makes every vegetarian's heart skip a beat. Eat your vegetables. That is very important. But it's also very important to know where they came from. Rylan shows us around on his farm and teaches us how to be green, both for your body and for the environment. So we're at Forestdale Farm here. Uh, this is a farm that my wife and I own and operate. Uh, it's about, you know, a little less than two acres that we grow here. We've got a lot of vegetables and some poultry. Forestdale Farm products are sold at the Flagstaff Farmers Market. Rylan says customers value the quality and personal connection that comes with buying locally. People are really happy because, you know, they're eating this food and going in, you know, so just having a close connection with it and knowing where it's coming from and that it's close into town and grown, you know, in sustainable ways is, is really important for people. To keep his farm as sustainable and organic as possible, he has created his own recycling system. We have chickens, we have fish, we have all these uh, different things and we try and keep kind of a little ecosystem here going. Uh, we're using water efficiently and we're, um, the produce that we're not using is going to the chickens and they're eating it and then the compost is coming back to the beds. In order to get a taste of the farm life, I'm helping Rylan with one of his daily tasks, harvesting some of his produce. After harvesting, he sells these produce on the local farmer's market. So I'm sure by now you're quite intrigued to buy your vegetables locally. But what if you could grow and harvest them in your own backyard? Now that's what I call local. Josh shows us around on the micro farm. Come with me. So we're at Roots Micro Farm uh, in Old Town Flagstaff, Arizona, uh, about a mile away from the downtown area. Inspired by the art of food preparation, Josh Chance and his wife Maddie Chance decided to do something different. So we initially wanted to start in Flagstaff because some of our favorite restaurants are here. There's a great culinary scene. So we saw that as an opportunity to be able to grow food for our community and for the restaurants as well. This community has a special meaning for Josh. Through his farming, he strives to contribute to a greener and happier neighborhood. I really fell in love with that idea of not only having beautiful, healthy food for yourself, but being able to provide some neighbors as well. Josh says he aims to continue inspiring others while also learning from them himself. Great things for the most part happen whenever people come together and they all work together uh, to carry out those main objectives and those main goals and this is a product of that. I'm Anna Moen from Maastricht and I'm exploring northern Arizona one bite at a time. Back to the studio. Seeing all this delicious fresh food sure makes me curious to see how Miguel is doing outside. Let's find out. Thank you for joining me again. My patty is almost ready and it's time for me to start with the bread preparation. I personally like my bread toasted a little bit, but if you don't like it, you can totally skip this part. While I'm waiting my meat to get fully cooked, I'm going to start with preparing some veggies. I'm going to cut these lettuce into small pieces so that it could be easier for you to eat it later. I'm also going to add a little bit of tomato. You're probably going to need only one or two slices, depending on how do you like it. I know that some of you maybe prefer adding mayo or mustard or some ketchup to your um, Burger, but personally for me, I'm going to keep it simple because I want to make the focus mainly on the meat. I'm going to start by forming my burger. My patty is ready. Here we come. Delicious. I'm going to add one or two pieces of cheese, like that. Of course, the veggies. 
Mmm, super yummy. And the tomato, one or two slices, it's gonna be perfect. Looking this burger almost ready makes me so thirsty. I'm gonna let you explore a little bit more what goes along with it. We're gonna see you, I'm gonna see you in the studio and we're gonna take it one bite at a time. Now, Miglana has almost everything she needs for her dish. However, there's one thing missing, the drinks. Dylan Booth visited a brewery and a vineyard, both of which are situated right here in Northern Arizona. Let's see if he can help us out. The Northern Arizona heat sure makes me crave for a nice cold beer. I'm here at Historic Brewing Company in Flagstaff where they create their unique local craft beers. Let's go inside and see how they make them. I met with Trevor Needle, Director of Operations for Historic Brewing Company. He says there are a lot of advantages to being local. We're a local community and that we are now we're Flagstaff driven. We only sell beer in Arizona. At Brewer Zach Stahl says he has two ways to create new beer recipes. There's the recipes where I envision my end goal and what my, I want my beer to taste like, and then I work backwards from there with all the different ingredients to try and create that. Uh, the other way is what's laying around what I have extra of. So I have my ingredients, and then I put together what I think is going to work best together from there to create a beer. The brewing business creates some waste. Rather than throw it out, Zach says they found a way to put it to use. Right now we donate to a Navajo family. They come down, pick it up and take it back to their cattle just north of uh, Flagstaff and feed it to them. Zach says he works hard, but there is one thing that he really loves about his job. Drinking the beer. Like, I get to create something and then I'm usually the first person that tastes it. I taste it all through the process so I get to see it from start to finish and how it turns out. Beer isn't the only locally made drink here in Northern Arizona. You can also get some great wine. Let's go to the vineyards to have a little taste of Arizona. From hops to grapes. Today we are here at the Alcantara Vineyard in Cunnamwood where we are going to taste and take a look at the best wines Northern Arizona has. We speak with Barbara who is really passionate about this beautiful place. The owner of Alcantara Vineyard Barbara Pretmore says wine is more than just a drink. It brings people together. Wine tasting is the common language around the world. Barbara set up this vineyard in her retirement. And for her, it's truly a labor of love. If you're going to sell high-end wine, you have to be somewhere where people can taste it. A vineyard with a lot of history, passion, and of course, great wine. They call me the crazy grape lady. Why is that? Because everybody said I was nuts. I could not do this. I'm definitely enjoying life right now. I'm Dylan Booth, exploring Northern Arizona, one sip at a time. Cheers. This will go perfectly with our meal, wouldn't it, Miglena? Of course, Charlotte. Everything will go perfect with this amazing burger. Now that you know where to find some local ingredients, why not try it out yourself? In fact, I'm challenging you to do it yourself. Find the recipe on our Facebook page, buy some local ingredients and get cooking. I'm Charlotte. And I'm Miglena. And I am Nona. And this was... A, a taste, taste of Northern, Northern Arizona. Arizona.